I get to record something? That gets my goat. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And it seems like it's been a long time since we did this. Was it? Maybe. I don't know if it counts. We, we tend to do these all in one day and then not do them for a month and then do them all in one day again. So maybe that's why it feels that way. I think there was one that just came out. So Okay. Well, that's good. I wanted to get this one in before the Oscars, the, uh, the Gay Man Super Bowl. Yay! Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> It's funny because, you know, it is the gay man Super Bowl. But if you look at the best actress category, it's like the hottest group we've ever had. Huh. Even counting the nine-year-old girl who's the youngest ever to be nominated. Huh. D- d- is it also the gay woman's Super Bowl or does that not – do they like other stuff? No, I would think the Super Bowl is the gay woman's Super Bowl. But I don't – Oh, Yeah. A lot of there had been a lot of talk about yours and my favorite category at the Oscars, which is the best animated feature. Or I don't know if it's our favorite category. I mean, I really do like that sound mixing. But you know, we we always focus on that and say, "Oh, what's going to win best animated feature this year? What's going to win the Pixar Award?" Remember? Will That's Pixar they... win the Pixar Award? We say, yeah. <laughs> Um, and there had been some buzz that uh, Wreck-It Ralph was going to beat Brave. You know, the, the Disney non-Pixar release was going to beat out the actual Pixar release. And I was just like, oh, blasphemy. That that could never, ever happen. <laughs> well, except for when Tangled beat. Uh, was Cars 2 even nominated? I, I think it was. Oh, okay. So has there ever been a Pixar film that was not nominated? Mm, I don't think so. I guess you could say Toy Story wasn't. Toy Story 2, Bugs Life. Right, but there was not a Pixar award <laughs> until. Yeah, Monsters Incorporated was the first year, and it got beat out of its own award the first year that they created it. And isn't it weird that it's been a decade and I still haven't let that go? <laughs> Me neither, obviously. There's going to be people in old folks' homes that are that will be complaining about the prequels and uh yeah the, the and i'll be Pretty right much. there saying well wow, forget the prequels what about shrek beating monsters incorporated that was complete um, bullshit i can't believe it so uh for one of for your daughter's birthday you went to see wreck it ralph yeah and that wasn't even recently was it no it was about a month ago well shoot a month and a half ago now just shortly after christmas but I don't remember you crowing about it and talking about how awesome Wreck-It Ralph was, but I do remember you saying that you liked it more than you liked Brave. And it was funny how angry I became about that. I was just like, oh, come on. (laughs) Blasphemy. You traitor, man. (laughs) It's like a too big A. It just didn't uh... seem fair for you to say something like that (laughs) it's funny i actually tried not to crow about it too much just to avoid um coloring your opinion on it i wanted you to see it with a completely open mind so i tried not to say too much okay and yeah you didn't say a lot but you did say that one dread phrase i don't think i said you asked me you wheedled it out of me. You, like, annoyed me until, you know, well, I don't know if you annoyed me, but you did ask me anyways, and I answered. <laughs> okay, I don't remember it that way, but it may be that that's the case. I mean, you did go on and on. You did crow about Paper Man. I did, yeah. Which I is the short that preceded Wreck-It Ralph. And I think we both agree that the short before Wreck-It Ralph was way better than the short before Brave. It must have been. I can't even remember what the short before Brave was. What was it? It was the uh, people that cleaned up the stars on the moon. Oh, it was the moon one? Okay, yeah, it was definitely. <laughs> it was the Godfather compared to uh, the Thomas the Train live action feature. <laughs> that was the difference in those two. It's amazing how often those two are, movies are compared. Yes, they are a lot. <laughs> but uh, you kept telling me, well, you, have you seen Wreck-It Ralph? Are you going to go see Wreck-It Ralph? 
And I, I told my niece that I would take her. And then I kept not going. And then somehow we both ended up going on the same night. It was when I was sick and uh, I'd stayed home from work that day and I basically slept the entire day. And so that night I was like, well, I'm going to be up all night. So maybe I should like go see a movie with Rish and at the very least not be completely bored the whole night long because, you know, everybody else went to bed. So, uh, yeah, I gave you a call and said, let's go see a movie. And Wreck-It Ralph was the uh, movie du jour. It was the one that uh, you hadn't seen because, you know, it tends to be hard to find those at the Dollar Theater because you see a lot of movies and you see them early. So when they get to the Dollar Theater, there's very few usually you haven't seen already. And I was totally willing to see it again. Yeah, see, our Dollar Theater is funny because there are certain kinds of movies they won't show. And there's a lot of movies that I would see for cheap, but I wouldn't pay $7 to see or, you know, $9. You know what I'm saying? I think you may be the same way. Right. But a lot of those movies that I wouldn't see for $9 never get to the cheap theater. Yeah. I don't like the way that they run it. They have Rise of the Guardians on two screens and they have Wreck-It Ralph on two screens and that cuts down on the the variety of the things that they you know, yeah. they only have so many screens. They have them on two screens, and there's only eight altogether. So yeah, so so we went, and you were in a foul mood, and I I, I, I wasn't sure if it was me or what the deal was on that, but well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe it's because I was sick all day. <laughs> now, yeah, that might have contributed, but I was just like, wow, he's lucky I don't have any other friends, but. So we saw the movie, and shoot, dude, I liked it better than Brave also. Oh, blasphemy. And I, yeah, I, I was defensive of Brave because I did talk to a couple of people that were like, yeah, it was for girls, and they dismissed it because of that. And you know me, I mean, I have issues with the fairer sex. I'm sure love to hear me refer to them as the fairer sex, but I don't dislike women i i just don't understand them but to have somebody dismiss a movie because it has a, a female heroine and 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 you know i always go back how many times have you heard me quote that entertainment weekly article that said pocahontas didn't make as much money as lion king and or aladdin because it had a female protagonist yeah that's uh not the reason i'm pretty sure it was just not uh, as good Little Mermaid and Belle or Beauty and the Beast, it did just fine. So I felt like Brave was really universal. You know, it, they could have had it be about a, a, a boy and his father, or, but they tried something different. And to me, it was really unique. I mean, we went on and on, for, or I went on and on for an hour about how it was unlike any Disney animated film I'd ever seen. Uh, and for that reason, I, I was really defensive of it, really protective of it. I was just like, wow, they tried something. They they tried. And a lot of times people do not try. They do the same thing that has worked a bunch of times. Or because it's an animated film, they don't feel like they even have to do anything. It's just like the crap that they show on Nickelodeon. It doesn't have to be good because it's a non-discerning target audience. Yeah, right. That was one thing that was really cool about uh, Brave is that they did try. And, and when you talk about the female protagonist, she may have been a female protagonist, but I think with almost no editing to the script, they could have easily just changed it to a young prince who doesn't want to marry and settle down with the wives that they're trying to pawn off on him. And he just wants to be the arrow shooting guy kind of a thing. You know, it could have just as easily been that way. And so it doesn't seem to me like it was exclusionary in any way. It was very much you could see yourself as Merida, even if you were a man, a boy, I guess you should say, because a man like me can't. I mean, you still can remember maybe what it was like when you were younger, but you can't see yourself as the person who's uh, getting the suitors. At least I can't. I don't know. Maybe you can. Before we talk about Wreck-It Ralph, though, I, I do want to talk about the trailers that we saw before Wreck-It Ralph, because like I was saying, the bar is set really low because they're kids. Kids haven't seen a thousand movies. 
They don't recognize the cliches. They don't recognize when something is tired, when something has been done to death, because they haven't seen all that much, or because they're used to watching their Tuesday afternoon cartoons or whatever, where there's no bar whatsoever that they're trying to measure up to. I don't know. I think I think Tom would hit Jerry with a bar oh, sometimes. Okay. Or no, Jerry hit Tom, sorry. But what we saw was trailer after trailer for computer animated kids' movies, but they were all so bland or so lifeless or so derivative of other things that we had seen or so fixated on butt humor, fart humor. I I, I complain a lot about this sort of stuff because... A lot of people seem to think that those movies are, are, are fun or good. You know, the Hoodwinked made a ton of money at the box office a decade ago. And that was when anything that was computer animated was guaranteed to make a lot of money. And so you had every studio start up their own animation wing to just pump these things out as fast as they could. But eventually they stopped making a ton of money every single time. And so, like, the really crappy ones, they just stopped getting made, I thought. But here, suddenly, it was 2003 again, sitting in the theater and seeing trailers for Dino Time, <laughs> seeing trailers for, oh, shoot, what are some of the others? Help me out. Despicable Me 2, I remember. Oh, yeah, they people had. were jizzing in their seats. They were so happy with the Despicable Me 2 trailer. Um, yeah. Escape from Planet it's Earth. Like, oh, the minions. They're so cute. Even the Monsters University oh, teaser the sucked. The Crudes was there. It seems like there was one other one that was almost as bad as Dino Time, and I, I, but I can't remember what it was. But, uh, you know, maybe the fault lies with the Lorax, which was universally panned and apparently a terrible movie, and it looked bad, and it made a gazillion dollars. It had a, a bigger opening than Brave. Yeah, I don't I don't get that. Maybe people just loved that Dr. Seuss book so much that they were willing to see it despite the many bad reviews it got. I don't know. That just doesn't make sense. Okay, so I, I was just super depressed by the trailer after trailer after trailer because lots of times seeing the trailers is my favorite part of the movie. Because even if the movie is disappointing... There might be a promise of three or four, five or six movies in the future that are attractive, that are appealing. That, oh, that looks like it'll be fun or that'll be funny or Ooh, that looks scary. Or, oh, I can't wait. Wow. I hadn't seen that before. But it was not that way for the movies before Wreck-It Ralph. Even the Monsters University trailer did nothing for me. Pixar has never been great with their trailers. But yeah, the Monsters University one was just kind of like a cheesy commercial for a school. So it gave you nothing of... Here comes, you know, this is what's going to happen in this movie or anything. It was just, guess what? There's a Monsters movie. Come see it. We know you will. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's probably true, but it's still pretty lame. Makes me kind of sad because we're talking about Pixar here, but it's kind of like the stupid Despicable Me trailer where they're just like, look, remember the Minions? Oh, you're, you're going to come see this. Just come see more Minions. They're going to do stupid things like they did in the last one. And they're going to talk like... Me, 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 me. They're going to talk like those aliens that came down on Sesame Street. Do you remember those aliens? They'll be like, mm -mm, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, I, I totally remember them. And I remember the grandfather clock just driving them into hysterics. But there was a guy in the seat behind us who was so excited about the Despicable Me minions. Yeah. And I believe he said, I wish that they'd make a movie with just the minions. Uh, which they are. Somebody somewhere said, you know, it's not enough to have rip-off characters of the aliens from Toy Story. Let's make a whole movie about the rip-off characters of the aliens from Toy Story. But, you know, I, I teach their own. I don't respond to them, but that guy certainly did. Yeah. Anyhow, so Wreck-It Ralph was uh, the, the holiday Disney film, and part of me was afraid that I would feel excluded because I'm not a video game guy. Right. And I knew that it was it was Toy Story, but with video games. That's how it was pitched. That's how I remember, you know, people saying that was the reason they were excited about it. 
you know, finally, all of these video games that we loved as kids will get their time in the sun the way that a Slinky Dog did. <laughs> so I, I was afraid of that. But you know what? It never even once, if anything, it felt like there was never such a thing as a home console or a phone that played video games or a DS or, you know, your PC games or whatever. It was set in a world where people still went to video arcades and put quarters in machines. Yeah, that I found was kind of interesting because they still brought it forward 30 years from when video games, you know, were first big back when we were little. But yeah, people were still going to lit wax friggin' uh, arcade. And these games were arcade consoles that you actually had to put a quarter in. And I, I loved the Hero's Duty game. The girl comes and she puts in the quarters to play that game the first time. And it's 25 cents times eight. <laughs> she has to put in eight quarters just to play the game once. You know, I didn't pick up on that. That, that kind of thing. I mean, I remember when they first started having games that had, were two quarters. And it was just like, oh, man. I would never play the 50 cent game. I was, yeah, I had a hard enough time being able to afford just one quarter, you know, be able to go somewhere and play four games if I'm lucky. But yeah, no way am I going to have to go and pay, play two games now instead. But yeah, that was kind of strange. I'm assuming there isn't, maybe there are still arcades out there somewhere, but I don't see them anymore they were always kind of hidden off to the side in the mall anyways so maybe is it possible that they still exist i don't know there used to be one just in the local mall and since i've moved here it has shut down but in there was a time when there was one in every grocery store and there was one in every mall and i guess now there are still chuck e cheeses and places like that but i don't yeah it's I think they still have like nickel cades out there where you can play old games for a nickel a, a play instead of more. Do you go to those a lot? No, I, I went to them a few times like 10 years ago, but I haven't gone to one in a long time. So they, it's possible they may not still exist. I don't know. Okay, so uh, Wreck-It Ralph, the other fear that I had was about the Sarah Silverman character. Can you remi remind me what the character's name was? Her name was Vanellope von Schwitz. Jeez Louise, that's such a great name. <laughs> I was afraid that she was going to be super snarky and super annoying, much like Kat Denning's character was in Thor, because of the, the scene they chose to use in the trailer. Do you remember me saying that to you? And I was like, oh, geez, oh, no. She repeats what he says, and the kids in the audience say, oh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I think kids already know how to do that. That's one of those things you're born knowing how to do. But yeah, I remember you thinking, oh, I don't know that I can like that movie because of that character. But there was so much heart in the character, in the in the Vanillope character. And she was just so likable. And I, I know that she was designed to be cute and all that stuff. But I just liked her and she was earnest and downtrodden and she just wanted a chance and all that. And I, wow, I, I loved that character more than I loved Ralph, Wreck-It Ralph. Uh-huh. That surprised me because I didn't expect to. And the thing that I came out of that movie with the most was just how insanely inventive that thing was. But just like every time they went anywhere or there were any characters, all of them were cleverly designed. And there were all sorts of candy references and things that were recognizable, but subtle. And they didn't hit you over the head with them. And I don't know. It just it was so much the opposite of what we had been seeing. I, there, there's that Despicable Me Minions I don't know what it is. It's a featurette thing where they plug the minion guy into the light bulb and he gets zapped. Uh -huh. And I've seen that again and again and again. And it's just like there's I, I guess it's fun to see someone in pain because <laughs> we all have little Dr. Mengele's within ourselves. Is that what it is? But it's just that I find no joy in that at all. I guess it's schadenfreude. Is that is that where you get the joy from watching that minion get zapped? <laughs> I don't know. I suppose it's slapstick humor. 
it's hitting somebody over the head and they fall down and then you chuckle and then it's one of those kind. I mean, that's a, it's a it's an old thing of humor that's been around forever, but it's definitely the kind of thing you go to first, which you know shows that you didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you, and it's hard in a heck one second or five second clip to convey that there is emotion that there's an emotional connection between the characters and that you're going to care about somebody uh, and so of course they're not going to focus on that in a, a wreck it ralph trailer or a monsters inc trailer but i really would have responded to the monsters university thing if they had said hey do you remember those characters that you loved they're back and now we're going to find out how they became friends in the first place or something like that. But that doesn't put butts in seats. I, I, I understand that. It's like, you know, uh, getting kicked in the balls that puts butts in seats saying featuring the voice of Brendan Fraser and Julia Stiles that puts butts in seats. But to say, hey, do you remember how you felt when Boo said Kitty? Come experience that again. People apparently don't respond to that. Because no one except me has a soul, apparently. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Anyhow, I, I really enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph. And I posted on Facebook when we got back, you know, that I just, hey, I just went. And it was so clever. And there was just, you know, so much more in that movie than there was in all the trailers put together, the movies that are coming before it. And somebody posted, yeah, it was pretty good for a Disney movie. <laughs> and I, I i have no response to that i kind of felt that i mean uh, not this is exactly the same but i i guess what i'm saying is i had i don't have trust in disney's computer animated guys yet you know what i mean i went to see wreck it ralph not expecting to love it because uh, disney was the one that did chicken little Disney's the one that did Meet the Robinsons. Hey, they did Bolt. Don't forget that. Yeah. That Disney's high watermark. Bolt. They did do, however, Tangled, which was really good. So, you know, they've got, they're on a roll, I guess you could say, because they've got one good one. So we'll see if they can get two good ones. You know, it was kind of like that where I went in there thinking, well, it's Disney. I don't know that I can trust them, but... We'll give them a shot and see because, you know, and like you were saying, I, I'm also not a video game guy. I wasn't big into video games. I didn't play a lot of video games when I was younger because I never had a video game console that was up to date. Like everybody got, I don't know, Nintendo when I got a friggin' Atari and then they were all on like Super Nintendo or whatever by the time I finally got a Nintendo. So I was always way behind but all the same, the games that they referenced, I mean, they, they referenced games for the most part that just were ones that you and I would know. And there was some, I'm sure, that we didn't. But even you and I, who didn't play video games a lot, still knew Street Fighter. We still knew, uh, I, maybe there is Not Knowing Cubert, but for us, there's no Not Knowing Cubert or, you know, oh, Pac-Man. Well, Pac -Man. I think there were Frogger references. There was Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. references. I've never played a Sonic game in my life, but I know who he is. Right. You know, they didn't make it so that you wouldn't get it. You didn't feel like, oh, this is just for gamers. And I guess they just picked the Universal games. But none of that stuff was important. True, you know what that's I mean? true. If you were a child who had never heard of any of those games, all that was important were Fix-It Felix sugar rush and hero's duty these three made up games that was all that was important and those things were all laid out for you too so you didn't even need to they weren't even important if you know what i'm saying it was all explained to you there it was like woody and buzz you know they were two made up toys too but they felt as real as all the ones that were you know that we played with all our lives <sighs> also i really loved that movie I was thinking about just the, how well they worked it all together and, and all the stuff that they put in there and just the ending when he repeats that bad guy oath 
the ba- <laughs> the bad anon thing as he's sacrificing himself. I, I I loved that so much. I can't help but shed a tear at that point, uh, as well as several other points in there. I mean, there's some really uh, hard to deal with uh, moments in there that just make you cry. You can't help it. And these are all spoilers. So if you haven't seen Wreck It Ralph, maybe skip ahead or something. But the time when he decides to, for her own good, save her and crushes her car. That was a hard moment to sit through, and that follows right on the heels of her giving him the medal that says, you're my hero. And uh, I don't know if you could call that manipulative or what, but uh, they really work your emotions throughout that uh, show. Well, I felt like it was earned. They dedicated the time to it. And it was genuine. I didn't. Right. I, I, I don't know. The The lesson that he learned was something that we could all relate to. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess you could boil it down to find out who you are and be comfortable with who you are. You know, you are an important part of this world or, or whatever the deal is. But he just he came to terms with being a bad guy and decided to be the best bad guy he could be. And. That's inspiring, even though, you know, none of us see ourselves as bad guys. I just was like, wow, I, 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 I cried at that scene. I cried when he mashed the car. I, I cried when she loved the completely messy, disgusting accident car he made her. Uh-huh. It, 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 what it felt like to me was that relationship between Boo and Sully in Monsters, Inc. Uh-huh. And, and you know, maybe that was accidental, but that relationship between those two was it for me it was a milestone everybody would talk about the jesse character the sarah mclaughlin mini music video in toy story 2 uh, and and yeah that was really powerful but i hate the, hated the jesse character so much it was hard for me to uh to say you know that movie is an emotional roller coaster or whatever it wasn't until the boo sully relationship in the third film Wait, well, fourth? What was which one was Monsters Inc.? Fourth? That would be fourth, yeah. That they just really grabbed my heart and squeezed. I mean, and also, you know, being abandoned is different than discovering that you care about somebody and that they need you and being there for them. That's I mean, it's the opposite of that, obviously. But we've had a couple of Pixar movies where you don't have that human connection in them. But for for the most part. Uh, that has been a bedrock of all the Pixar right. flicks. And that has been absent in all but the very fewest competition <laughs> animated films. Yeah, that, I don't know. There there was lots of other stuff, too, uh, in the, there. I mean, there was the Felix character and his relationship with uh, Jane Lynch's character, wh- whatever her name was. What, I can't remember what her name was. Jane Lynch, we'll just call her. But we got a lot of slapstick there. And you had the pretty much delightful slash villainous uh, King Candy. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, there. Were, I mean, there was also tons and tons of humor. And there were moments when I just, I laughed in delight at how creative it was and how clever it was. Uh, for example, just the King Candy's ice cream cone launching machine. <laughs> Using an ice cream cone as a weapon was so delightful to me. I I don't know. I mean, maybe these Disney animated go- uh, feature guys have been in the shadow of Pixar for a decade. And they're just like, gosh, I wish we could prove ourselves as good as they are. And so they really, really, really worked hard on this movie. Because I, f- I felt like Wreck-It Ralph was a more accomplished film than Tangled was. Yeah. Tangled was, to me, a throwback to the Disney films that I loved, but it wasn't. It, it felt like it was trying to be alongside Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid, but Wreck-It Ralph, to me, felt like it was trying to be alongside Finding Nemo and Toy Story 3 and Up and Wally, which, you know, are Pixar's best. Yeah, it definitely was. It did have much more of a Pixar feel to it than anything else really (laughs) that i can think of 
Yeah, it was it was really well done. There was yeah a lot of really creative stuff, and I love that you know the ice cream launcher thing that you're talking about. And he throws it and hits the the ice cream lands on the car, and they go oh a la mode. <laughs> <laughs> just all that stuff there were there was so many really fun and the cool thing was it wasn't just contained because they could go to different worlds i mean video games are all different and they went to you know the wreck it ralph world which is one kind of creative and was really interestingly done and animated even like just the way the little nice landers moved around they moved <laughs> yes. really jerky and it was like frames were missing in their motion kind of a thing and uh you know just all that kind of stuff that they would do there which was totally different from the hero's duty air you know thing which was done in a completely different way and <laughs> it's funny because talking about how many different times i cried in this movie when he circumvents the deal and gets his medal and he stands there as all the uh soldiers the holographic soldiers salute for him and everything and call him great and, you know you've done it even that made me tear up because of how you know you know that character who was just so reviled by everyone where he's from must feel to be honored even if he didn't even earn it for real you know he's still you know just that was something special and then you move on to the other game which is the sugar rush game and yeah now it's another completely different kind of a, a world and they went all out on all the worlds to make them all seem especially the sugar one i guess there's a lot you can do with candy because that's one of those really uh rich areas with a lot of history and stuff to go on they went all out on that and came up with every good idea that they could that they possibly could well for example the policemen were donuts <laughs> which is clever in itself but their names were Officer Winchell and Officer Duncan. Uh huh. I mean, dude, right there, that is more cleverness than you get in all of the Puss in Boots movie. <laughs> and that's just just the beginning. I love, one of those things I really loved is when the Oreos are doing their uh, their march and they're singing the Wizard of Oz song, but saying Oreo instead of Oeo. Just that, yeah. I mean, that kind of stuff is so great. It was a good show. It was definitely worth it. It's probably still the dollar theater. I actually, to tell you, I mean, I don't know. I would be happy if either Brave or uh, Wreck-It Ralph wins. But personally, I I don't know. I guess I just feel that Wreck-It Ralph was better. It was more complete. I don't know. Maybe it just appealed more to me. Maybe that was the thing. And maybe uh, if I was a girl then I wouldn't think that, but we already went over the fact that that wasn't for girls, so I don't know that that's it. But I would be pleased if either one of them won. The Wreck-It Ralph gets my vote, uh, but as you said, yeah, if Brave wins it, Brave is laudable, and Brave is, is unique, and uh, and it was a really good movie. I just, I'm not going to be gnashing my teeth and be like, oh, not again! If Wreck-It Ralph wins, I think they... Uh, those nominations are well earned. You won't compare it to Shrek? No, definitely not. You won't be grumbling about it at the old folks' home? Well, if like, uh, boy, what was the Pirates movie? Oh. The stop motion pirate flick also is nominated for Best Picture. Uh huh. But it, does, it might not be as bad as the trailer. I mean, we've seen <laughs> a lot of these misleading, really bad trailers for good movies. But yeah, I might complain a little bit about that if that Pirates movie won. There you go. If that one wins, we have something to complain about. But uh, yeah, one thing that we didn't talk about hardly at all, and I, I, I guess I crowed about it when, when I went and saw it, but I never told you anything about it, uh, which was the short beforehand, which was Paper Man. Um, so did you love that one like I loved it, or uh, did I oversell it? I, no, I don't think I loved it as much as you did. I, I loved Wreck-It Ralph way more than I loved Paper Man. But it is also nominated for an Oscar for Best Short Animated Film. So it'll be interesting to see if that gets an award next week. Yeah, I'll have to complain about that in the uh, old folks' home. 
Be like, can you believe that? Uh, I don't even remember the name of it because it's the only short I saw the whole year was that one. So whatever it was, the beat paper man. <laughs> There's a Simpsons short called The Longest Daycare that a lot of people were saying, oh, that's going to win. And I was like, really? That The Simpsons is relevant? Huh. The Simpsons do a sh- did a short? Where did it appear? I, my guess is it appeared before Ice Age 4 or 5, whichever Ice Age it was. Huh. But anyhow, around the time this episode airs, uh, I think you'll be able to check out Wreck-It Ralph. You'll be able to rent it or buy it or uh, download it illegally. Oh, well, you can already download it illegally. Go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm going to have to buy it. I just, I, oh, I wish I could feel the way I felt during that movie last week. I soared. I wanted to be a better writer. I wanted to be a better friend. I wanted to be a better man. And yet you are none of those. I wanted to wreck it. <laughs> no, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> you are. <laughs> uh, Cool. All right. Well, I think we've come to uh, the end of our episode here. Yeah. So I would like to thank you all for participating, for being a part of the show, for listening in. And uh, have a good week until we come back at you again with another That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rashad Field. Why not? Bye-bye. Hey, that ain't funny, man. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Big and rich a national treasure, man! <laughs>